This is Matt Roush, Technology Editor at WWJ News Radio 950, and I'm here at Michigan Technological University in Houghton today with Elena Simochkina, who is Associate Professor of Electrical and Computer Engineering uh, here at Michigan Tech, and she is actually working on uh, electronic cloaking devices. Uh, not quite a Harry Potter cloak of invisibility, maybe more like the Romulan uh, uh, cloaking device in Star Trek. Uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about what that uh, uh, pile of uh, uh, green uh, circular objects is there and, and what, it, what it can do. Okay, so this is our cloaking device, right? We, have, we can see here such tiny little resonators. These are our artificial atoms. Okay. They create, as a resonance conditions, they create some special properties. Um, which makes their ma artificial material properties, effective material properties, be unlike the properties of normal atoms, which we have listed in the periodic table, right? So by using these specific, specific properties and by locating them in a specific arrangement, we can bend the rays of electromagnetic wave around this cloak. Uh, so, so that if we put a metallic cylinder inside, we wouldn't see this. So, so if you were to, say, put a metallic cylinder inside that circular array and then try to find it with radar, uh, with the dielectrics on, the radar might not be able to see it or wouldn't be able to see it nearly as well. Something Correct. like that? Okay. Yes. That's exactly what, what we are doing. This is not perfect yet, so we have increased transmission with the cloaking. Okay. It's not 100%, but we, we are conducting the first experiments with this, with this thing. And what, I mean, what might be some of the, I mean, obviously these, there are, there are military, potential military applications here, or other things? Um, whenever you want to make yourself invisible, of course, this is now just for microwave right. Right? frequencies. Not, not visible light yet. We're not, not visible light yet. For visible light, you need to have a very tiny resonators. You wouldn't see them with your bare eye, yeah. okay, because they will be at nanoscale. We have a design of a cloak for infrared and this is made from nano-sized calcogenic glass resonators. Okay. And again, you need a special device to see these specific tiny resonators. But the properties are pretty similar to this one. Okay. That's why we can model these properties in the lab, because we have equipment to, uh, to send the waves and to receive the waves from the other side of the optic. Okay, so, so if you were to cloak a large metal object in that type of material, somehow or other, figure out a way to do it, uh, radar might not be able to see it, right? Right, and okay. actually the size of the object doesn't matter. Okay. It, it's not important. The important is the shape at this, at this point. Okay. So this specific arrangement will only work for a cylindrical shape. Okay. All right, and I'm going to uh, show people your experiment here that was presented uh, last year. The uh, top illustration there shows a cylinder uh, with waves being shown at it, and you can see a shadow uh, 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 behind the object. But the bottom uh, illustration shows what happens when the resonator is working, and you can see the waves at the top of the chart are pretty much the same as the waves at the bottom of the chart, which means the waves didn't see the object at all, right? Yeah, okay. that's exactly true. Okay, so uh, do you think there might be some commercialization potential here? When do you think that might happen? Any ideas, or are you just doing the research now? You know, this is uh, in the stage of just proof of concept right, right now. Yeah. We can think of many potential applications, but first we need to have materials ready for every frequency range, and uh, th there is some work done for uh, visible range as well now, but probably we, need, we can use some other kind of resonances material resonances to, as we go to higher and higher frequencies, uh, the type of resonances can, can, can change. Okay. For visible range, of course, we can envision some applications which uh, could be used by our bare eye, right? So yeah. it could be even some toys, right? <laughs> okay. Maybe, yep. Yep. maybe ex very expensive at this point. But um, protection, what I can tell you about it, could be a protection from different uh, electromagnetic radiation. Oh, okay. As well, because it's a kind of shielding. Yeah, right, right. right. So you can bend the waves and just, and this is an important problem right now. Right, so, so I mean, if, if, I was going to say, if you move past visible light, you get into x-rays all the way up, and those are damaging, right? You could, you could potentially shield against x-rays with this stuff. Right, because the, all the electromagnetic phenomena are scalable, right? right? It depends on the wavelength is related to the uh, size of these resonators. Of course, the resonances could be different, as I told. Uh, there are not many 
materials which can allow to produce geometric resonances, to create some tiny such tiny resonators at this range. Maybe we need to think about some material related resonances, like um, resonances like plasmonic, polaritonic resonances, which occur exactly at higher and higher frequency ranges in different materials. Okay. Thank you, Elena Samushkina, Associate Professor of Electrical and Commuter Computer Engineering here at uh, Michigan Tech. Thank you.